To head off on an adventure means to head off into the unknown and face many unexpected surprises. You are no doubt aware that Solar Impulse has had to temporarily postpone its round-the-world voyage and will start again next spring. But this journey has already been so extraordinary that I must carry on telling you all about it. It is incredible, but he's done it. Andre Borschberg spent almost five days and five nights flying over the Pacific between Nagoya and Hawaii at the controls of Solar Impulse. No person has ever flown solo for so long. But even if our plane just needs the sun to recharge its batteries, our pilots need water, food, and sleep. So wouldn't this all be easier without anyone in the plane? Just control from the NCC like a kind of drone? Well, you know, this challenge was first and foremost designed to change human attitudes and to make us use cleaner technology. But to make the challenge more relevant, a technological one would not have been enough. We needed the human dimension as well. I see what you mean. Well, then what do the pilots eat on board? They have a daily ration of three meals, as well as some snacks if they feel peckish. These all come in special sachets that have been developed for this expedition. Each dish can be kept for several days, despite the wide variation in temperatures that the cockpit endures. Obviously, there is no steak and fries on the menu, but they do have risotto or potato granin, for example. Our flying athletes are consuming some 3,500 calories a day, which is like 10 plates of spaghetti bolognese or 10 kilos of broccoli. Yuck, I don't like broccoli. But to remain healthy, they need not only to eat, but to move about, and they cannot even stand up in this cockpit. But once again, everything has been planned so that our pilots remain fit and healthy. Just look, there is Andre doing his exercises. Unfortunately, he can't take a shower after exercising. The pilots use special wipes to freshen up. They don't shave either, but have a lotion they rub on that slows down the growth of facial hair. And what do they do if they feel the need? Underneath the seat, there's a hole which has a detachable bag for such eventualities. And afterwards, they just throw the bags out the window like a water bomb? Oh, come on now, Grumo. Once the bags have been released, they're stored in the plane until it next lands when they're thrown away. So that means the pilot is sleeping on the toilet. Anyway, the pilot can tilt the back of the seat to make it longer and for it to become a kind of bed. But remember, the pilot can only sleep for a maximum of 20 minutes in one go. There's no chance of a lie-in. So, once again, children, it is a major feat. On a flight of 24 hours, our heroes can only sleep for a maximum of four hours. And only when the weather is fine, because if there is any turbulence, they must remain awake at the controls. So they must be able to sleep on demand then? Is that feasible? What a cool idea. Well, when I decide to sleep, I just sleep, like now. Well, children, it all comes down to training. Bertrand has reverted to self-hypnosis. Just look. As for Andre, he uses yoga and meditation. There he is in the airplane in the lotus position. So with their respective methods, both pilots can very quickly fall asleep and then wake up feeling refreshed. It is just incredible how a human being is capable of adapting to such extreme conditions. Listen, that makes me think of a female explorer. That's right, a woman called Alexandra David Nell. About a century ago, whilst traveling around Asia, she developed an interest in yoga and introduced it in Europe. But, uh, but they're not even completely covered. Don't they ever get cold up there? Well, it is true that the temperature in the cockpit can go from minus 20 degrees to plus 35 degrees, and that they are always in the same clothing. It's like you're in skiing and then to the beach using the same clothes. Exactly. But thanks to this high-tech material, it can warm the body when the temperature is cold and stop the body from sweating when the temperature is hot. That's magic. Well, the explanation is a little more scientific, but there is certainly something magical about solar impulse.